15 years ago, Stephanie had the world at her fingertips. I had a really successful executive search business. I'd been a headhunter for many years in London and Sydney, and I was absolutely at the top of my game, um, feeling like, you know, a master of the universe. And then suddenly, out of the blue, I found a lump, and my life just changed beyond all recognition within the space of a few days. You feel very different from everyone else in that you don't have that natural sense that you're going to be here in five years' time, and that's quite isolating. Um, I think everybody walks around in high conviction that they're going to be going on holiday in three months' time or going to be doing this, and, and when you're going through it yourself, you really don't know. As she battled her way through treatment, Stephanie's life was forever changed. You know, it all happens very, very quickly, and one of the first things you're told is that you need to have a non-wired bra and a natural fibre to see you through treatment. And the only ones I could find were maternity bras, and I'd just been told I'd never have kids after chemo. So it was an enormously confronting thing to happen, and I felt that as a, as a woman and as a female consumer, I'd kind of just fallen off the map, and it, it really stuck with me that at a difficult time, women shouldn't have to be faced with this sort of additional burden. So I started making bras with some friends who happened to be in the industry, made out of organic cotton. So they were really beautiful, fun bras, but they were always quietly fit for purpose for women going through breast cancer. Slowly but surely, bras became Stephanie's full-time gig. But as her knowledge of the industry grew, her positive vision expanded. Trump had just been elected in the US and women were burning their bras in the street. That whole Helen Reddy movement was happening again. And at the same time, in uh, Delhi in India, um, poor people were dying in their dozens because they were burning rubbish and it was so toxic that it was killing them. And it really crystallised in my mind then that I wanted to make something that was so clean that it could be burned or buried at end of life and it would leave no trace. After striking a deal with a small overseas factory, Stephanie set out to achieve the impossible. When I first decided to do it, and I thought, I am going to create the world's first zero waste bra, I had no idea how hard it was going to actually be. And if you knew how hard it was to do, you would never do it. But you just chip away at it bit by bit. My factory kept trying new things and sending them to me and then they'd say, well, it's just got a little bit of glue in it. And I'd say, well, it's just a little bit too much glue for me, so we're going to have to start again. And I think in the end, all of my suppliers and my factory realised just how dogmatic I was going to be about it and that I wasn't going to give in. And so they kind of had to go on that journey with me. <laughs> the result of that journey is a bra made entirely of globally sourced organic materials. The fabric, the elastic, even the tag. So it can go into compost. It can actually be buried in soil. We had one put into a worm farm and the worms ate it within eight weeks, which was phenomenal. These are for the courier train line, so we've got a bit more time to do that. You know, 92 million tonnes of clothing goes into landfill globally every year. Everything that we buy, every choice that we make as a consumer has an impact on the environment in which we live. And my business grows, you know, 30 to 100% a month, which is, I think, a really great endorsement that people want different things. <laughs> it's been so hard, but it's, I love what I do. I'm really proud of what I do. I just feel so blessed.